So this is my John Deere 755 tractor, and we're gonna get this all stripped down and down into here and see if we can't add some power beyond hydraulics. One coming out the back in case I ever find a backhoe for it. And uh, the other, some levers on the side there for some maybe grapple functions down the road. First thing we're gonna take off is one, two, three, and there's a fourth one right there. We're gonna take this seat off and out of the way. John Deere actually made a Power Beyond kit for the 55 series. And they are kind of hard to find nowadays. Most people just kind of make their own. But if you can find a 55 series manual, which they are online and easy to track down, they do have instructions on what plugs and everything you need to take out to do this. So that's kind of handy. Gonna have to get a wrench on the top and the bottom there. I'm gonna take this little seatbelt strap off just to uh, get it out of my way. Of course, if you had an impact, speed things up. Oh, I lost my little adapter though. That little guy came off too. I don't wanna lose that. There's a little lock washer that goes on there too, it fell in there. Can't get to it now, but when I get the seat off, I'll be able to get it. But I just like to put all the hardware together like this. That way I don't lose, uh, lose anything. The fenders will have to come off too. These just unscrew like that. And there are two bolts, one there and the other one right there. Both 10 millimeter on, on both sides. Take those out and we should be able to pop this cover off. The top one here, the little tab, there's tabs on the back side of these that that screws into. It's broken and it's just free spinning back there. Let me see if I can't uh, take this plastic cover off. Maybe get a pair of channel locks on it, good enough to get it out. And we'll just have to get a, either get a new clip or try to put a nut on the back side when we put it back together. It's got clips just like just like that does on the back side. Might be too big. Okay. Took that cold chisel and broke the clip off the end. I could sit there for another 20 minutes trying 27 different pliers or just move on with it. Now I'll take these out. Can't quite get that one off. It's kind of an awkward spot. We're just gonna see if we can't sneak out underneath this here. Yeah. So the next step is to remove this fender. There's a bolt there and there. And there's a couple right down in there. And then there's this nut right here. 
Let's see if we can pull that whole fender off there. So they are half inch, that one's already out. Uh, this one's got a little wire harness bracket on it. It just, well, let me get something to, just take something to bend it out of the way without getting into that wire too bad. You got access to it. And then you do have to undo the wiring harness for the fender lights. Which is just right here. And then we'll repeat that same step over here. We'll take this fender off. The bolt's pretty much in the same place. Wiring harness tucked up underneath there again. Bend that clip out of the way. Another bolt here. And the linkage is out of the way for now, but we will have to take that off because this bracket comes off next. Since this one was stuck on the other side, go ahead and soak a little fluid on it this side. It's kind of tucked back on there. This is kind of a messy technique, but it works okay. The penetrating fluid would work good too, but it kind of follows the stick. And the stick's on the bolt, so it works its way down to the bolt. We'll let that soak while we're getting these other ones off, and hopefully that one comes off a little bit easier. So the next step is this bolt. There's one on each side, not these. See, I got the little torque line, whatever you want to call it, reference line on there. These uh, kind of hold the tractor together. You're going to have a heck of an art project if you take those out. Just that one on each side. And then this bracket should lift up out of there. We got a couple springs and linkages, but uh, should lift up out of there for us. So that one is a 15. Is there a nut on the back? Nope, it's a welded nut on the back side. There's a whole lot of linkages to disconnect on this part. Wish I had a good way to keep all that together. Nice, that was kind of separate of everything. Just let the grip on it. There we go. Now that's free. And these C brackets are still held on. There's a couple bolts here. You could take out and take the whole bracket off. Or you could take these out, I think, and take that section off. I think I'm going to do that and leave this bracket here. That way I know what I have to work with when it comes to running the hoses. See where that hard line goes. I'm assuming that's probably a half inch like everything else that was kind of in that area. And it seems to be. Oh, yep, there you go.
gonna go ahead and mock this fender back up. Put just a couple bolts in it to hold it. And we can figure out how we're gonna put our valve on here. All right, so I just got that bolt in loose there. And one more. Oh, yeah. Right there. I'll have to hold it up there. We can kind of mock up what we're wanting to do here. A lot of people just, a lot of people just mount these up on the fender. They mount them here, which is kind of weird and awkward. I've seen some mount them here. I'd like it to be below whatever we're doing. And the only thing that's sticking through are the handles. And then maybe, maybe the um, quick connect stick up too, so it's easy to like that. So I played around with it a bit. This is definitely where I want it, but on the bottom side of it. I'm not 100% sure I have enough clearance between the inside of the fenders for the supply and the return. P for pressure, T for tank. I'm not sure I have enough clearance, but we may have to do a little work there to make that happen. And I think I'll have the quick connects come up through the fender as well. I grabbed a piece of um, half inch PEX from the house to kind of simulate a hydraulic hose. Get myself some rough measurements here. So tomorrow morning we'll take the valve. Nope, wrong side. Fancy little schematic. Our hydraulic hose lengths, and we'll take one of these plugs with us too to make sure we get the right size for that. See if we can't get all those made up and come back and solve them together. So in order for me to do this project, I do quite a bit of research on hydraulic fittings. I've done some hydraulic work for Dirt Perfect, and by hydraulic work, I mean hooking up hoses that he's ordered. I really haven't done a lot on my own as far as researching the fittings. I did find that there are several types of fittings, and we'll kind of walk you through those real quick here. This is an O-ring boss. 
The biggest difference in all these fittings we're going to talk about is basically where the seal is actually at. But this is called an O-ring boss fitting, and the seal is primarily the O-ring. The nice thing about this is you can kind of swivel it whatever direction you want, and use that little jam nut that my left hand is on to tighten it down. And that fitting on the right side with the little bevel on it, that's a JIC fitting. That little bevel is 37 degrees. 38 degrees was just too much, so they decided on 37 degrees for it. And this is an MPT, which stands for National Pipe Tapered Thread. And I don't know if you can tell, but the threaded section, it's not perfectly straight up and down. It's got a little bit of a taper to it. So on the O-ring boss, the seal is the O-ring itself. On the JIC, the seal is that beveled section at the end, that 37 degree bevel. And on the MPT, the seal is actually the threads themselves. Now typically when you mess with MPTs, you do use a thread sealant, but a lot of the people I talked to advised on not using thread sealant with the hydraulic system so you don't actually get anything into the hydraulic system, but we do have problems with leaks later. There's a little chart I found that said the most reliable are the O-ring boss as far as leaks are concerned, and then the GIC come in second, and the MPT are probably the least reliable as far as leaks go. And one thing to note here, both of these fittings, they're both technically half-inch fittings, and you can see how different they are. So if you get into a hydraulic project, it's definitely worth taking the time to do a little bit of that research and make sure you're getting the right fittings. I got all these from hydro Hydraulics, the words there, but hydraulicsdirects.com. No partnership, no sponsorship. They just, honestly, I went to several websites and theirs was the most user-friendly. And that's what I ended up using. So to do this whole thing, I'm actually just following the manual on how to do the OEM kit. There's two plugs here. These are 3 8 O-ring boss connections. That's a three-quarter socket I have on there. So we're just going to go ahead and back these out. You saw I cleaned off a little bit, trying to keep some debris out of there. Back those off, made sure they broke loose okay. The biggest thing that I had to figure out is that this fitting right here, there's a little pipe plug. And inside here, when you take this pipe plug off, there is a diverter plug that you have to put in. And I'll show you that here in just a second. And there's that diverter, diverter plug, and there's that part number. It was really easy to find. I found that online as well pretty quick. But what you'll notice is that pipe plug, the diverter plug, the shiny chrome-looking colored one, compared to the pipe plug, the diverter plug is quite a bit smaller, and that's because it actually goes inside the pump. Now, I didn't have an Allen wrench long enough, so I kind of rigged something up, then I put some heat shrink on it there to keep it all together. You can see that. And it was really hard to see in there, and you couldn't quite tell if you were in the threads very well. So you see I keep turning it back and forth. I keep turning it, putting pressure, and going to the left until it kind of skips. So I know I'm on the threads, and I kind of snug it up a little bit. They say to just bottom it out. Don't put a whole lot of pressure on it, and that's all it really takes. And then we're just kind of giving it a little wiggle to make sure I get out without dropping my Allen wrench deep inside the pump. Of course, that's not where the actual pump is at. The pump is on the back of the tractor, but you get what I mean. We don't want to lose any tools inside there because then we got to take that all apart. And then you put the pipe plug back in. And the manual does recommend putting pipe thread compound on that pipe plug. So this is one of the, this is one of the lines that runs back into the SCV, which is the controls for the front end loader. To get the fittings on for the auxiliary hydraulics, you gotta break this loose and just kind of spin it out of the way. Otherwise, you won't be able to spin the new fittings into place. And you'll see what I mean here once we get this cracked loose. So just kind of turn it out of the way, that's all you have to do. And now I was able to take that plug out, cleaned up that surface so that O ring has a good clean surface to mate to. And you can see there where the clearance issue would be. If that was still hooked up, I wouldn't be able to make that make that turn on there. Now that we got it on there, got it at the angle I wanted, tightened down the jam nut, and we were good to go. And then I went with all 3 8 or number 6 size 
JIC fittings for that hose. Just for consistency, more than anything. And the same thing on the other side. As far as the valve itself, I got this off of Summit Hydraulics. These two side fittings, those are half inch O-ring boss fittings. Again, one of the advantages of the O-ring boss is you can turn it to whatever angle you want. So wherever you mount this, you can angle the hoses out coming out the direction you want. So we'll get her facing where I want her, and then I just tighten that jam nut down and it's good to go. And then it's got a half inch JIC coming out the back side. So you can see once we get those fittings on there, it's not going to slide into that fender the way I want it to. So I'm going to do something that I'm in the video when I was doing this was incredibly nervous about. I've never done, I'm going to use this term very loosely, body work before. And I'm not too excited about cutting up the fender on the tractor, but I'm going to do it because I'm dangerously obsessed with the clean look of this being underneath the fender. I just want that look. I want it to look good. And I've definitely never stick welded anything this thin before. So this is going to be a lot of first for me, but I'm excited to try it. I know a lot of people are going to be asking, how come I'm not using the newer electric style solenoids and valve bodies that you can get? You guys have seen Tractor Time with Tim use them and other tractor channels, and they're slick. They're awesome systems. They work really well, and I would definitely highly recommend them. The main reason I'm not doing it, though, is the biggest thing I love about this 755 is it's old enough and everything on it is mechanical. It's hydrostatic, mechanical, it's not electric, there's no switches on the pedals, it's all linkages. And I just really like that. So if what I love about this tractor is the fact that most of it's mechanical, I'm going to stick with the theme. I'm not going to go add a bunch of electronics to it. The other thing is, even with that electronic kit like that, you still have to have the auxiliary hydraulics to connect to. So we still would have had to plumb everything underneath the seat. Well, with all that being said, we're going to enter some new territory. I'll just let you sit back and watch, and we'll catch up with you later on the video.
guess we might as well take the handle off, huh? Whoops. We're getting close too, we're looking really good. This fab work on the fender was gonna be the most work and I was aware of that. But I think it's looking nice. It's looking really nice. So here's the situation. I'm not 100% comfortable with the clearance that's going on between the three point and this. This is pretty similar to where the stock kit had these, but these stick out a little further than what the stock kit does. We might have to redo that plate. I made up a little whip section. This has to be a continuous loop for it to run, otherwise you're just putting pressure to here and there's no way for it to return. So let me put a little whip section on so we have a continuous loop. We'll fire this up, make sure there's no leaks on all these connections, which are complete. And if that's all good, we'll go ahead and start reassembling it and get the seat on. And that way we can see if we can adjust this bracket forward or maybe up a little bit out of the way. I can tell you right now it's going to be a problem. this back on. Biggest thing to remember on that that I forgot and then redid is there's a little clip right there that holds these wires on both sides. 
put that one in pretty easy. Flip the uh, those up out of the way in the SCV. And we gotta get these linkages to sit right down here. And then the bolt that holds that just looks way different than everything else because it's got this big fat washer that rides right there on that linkage. That's gonna go in there when we get to that point like that. So you should be able to snug it up pretty good and still be able to operate your that's your range, your high low. Same thing on this side. This one has a another washer that goes with it. I'm trying to think if there's a yeah, here it is. Same thing as the other side. You'll be able to snug it up and still have range of motion under control. That should be selecting PTO mid mount or rear. So that's good. These were the little neoprene ones. If you want to get real technical, you're supposed to replace neoprene nuts with new ones after you use them, but I think we'll be okay. All right. wiring harness right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And we got some slack to play with. We need to go ahead and put the controls on here. I think this turned out okay. I've, I've never done body work, if you want to call it that, and I've certainly never stick welded anything this thin before. I guess if a guy wanted to do it super right, he could have went back over it and filled some of those little spots in. If I wanted to do the paint right, I guess I could have used like a build-up primer. I don't know. I've never done First time, all right? So we'll take it. And then we all have the same expectation that the green's gonna be a different color, right? It's just a generic John Deere green implement enamel. So it's not gonna be a perfect match, but it looks better than rust. I think that'll work just fine. Definitely a little different shade of green, or maybe what this green used to look like. I don't know. Either way. And we got this guy that goes right in here. Everything is just kind of hand started right now, still pretty loose so we can get everything lined up before we snug it all down. I've always had problems with this little SCV valve binding up on me. Just the, not the actual valve, but the, the mechanism, the linkage here. So I shortened the pin up a little bit and then I put some grease on that pin too. See if that won't help smooth operations. That pin was quite a bit longer than that. It's still probably a little too long. Should be an improvement anyway. It looks good. It looks better than what it was. We got this linkage right here.
gonna try to start this one, this one first. Try that on this one. If I can get this one started, then I kind of tilt the whole thing. That was definitely easy. We're not gonna grind that one off. I'm proud enough to just put that behind some paint. But we are gonna take the uh, flap wheel, we'll soften those edges real quick. So I'm thinking about making a few last minute changes here. I was trying to put a shorter hose on here to keep everything nice and compact, but I think I'm going to have to keep these longer ones on. In fact, I'm just going to put the longer one back on here because I'm pretty convinced that shorter one's not going to work the way I want it to. Can you see how that shorter one's right here in the path of the three point? But if I put the longer hose on there, it gets it way up here out of the way. I think that's probably the better option. It's got some room to play if something does bump it. So that gets it up an hour away. Okay. Do have a little leak right here, but I think with all the connections, I'm 99% sure I just forgot to tighten those. I got an old cylinder that I dug out of Dirt Perfect scrap pile. We'll hook up to the valves over here. Well, we gotta get the valves hooked up to, I guess. Don't we? Let's see how much. Oh, yeah, look at that. They're not even. It would help if I tighten that down, bud. The bright side, the three point, just really getting lubed up on this. So I got some more fittings. So whenever you, uh, whenever a fella fabricates, at least for me, if you're trying to make something, uh, what always ends up happening, happening every time is there's 
your plans, right? There's your expectations of how you think it's going to look or how you think it's going to go together. And you do quite a bit of research, try to get it close to that. But then, of course, there is reality. And reality can be pretty expensive sometimes. And that's where we're at now. We've got to make a couple changes over here. And I'm not even sure the changes I'm making are something I'm completely in love with. Is that a... Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. These are all O-ring boss fittings onto the jobby here. Question is, do you have enough room to make the connections with it like this? And the answer is yes. Awesome. Maybe I need to get that tighter. You know, I thought that was going to look kind of goofy, but I actually like that. It's not bad. It doesn't stick out past. I got caps for all of them I'll put on there, but we're going to have to take these two back off so we can uh, test the system. But it looks good. The idea is, I don't have enough money that I can buy implements. I have to build them. So the idea is whenever I build them, all 90 are click attach. And then, you know, I can run hoses up to a grapple or whatever. Maybe put a hook or something on the inside to help support the hose. Or we'll 90 back to whatever we're working on back here, if it's a road drag or something like that. That's kind of the idea. It's like the midway point. So you're either going back or forward, and the hoses will come in with a 90 click attach. Kind of like how this is a 90 quick attach. So I've got this old cylinder here. Like I said, I dug it out of Dirt Perfect's scrap pile. Let me put a couple hoses on. I'm going to take these off and plug those two because I, I didn't buy enough quick attaches to go to a hose because I'm not building an implement yet. But uh, let's see if we can't uh, run this cylinder in and out with the controls here. got some leaks here and there that's not all too surprising but um it works <laughs> so that's pretty cool so i lost i lost my little quarter inch three eighths adapter and this literally just showed up in the mail today from a subscriber um you're saving me right now bud i'm gonna pop this seat off one of those hoses underneath i feel like it's just gosh man half the time i could have done this whole project um one of those hoses is just a little too long under there and it's kind of binding up and I've got a shorter hose from my planning stage of the project I think will work See how much of a bind this hose is in? I've got this one. Let's swap it out. I can get to it from right here.
you can see there's not a huge difference here. But in a tight space like this, it can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So here's the final answer for under the seat. Looks good, everything's really good, secure and snug down and tight. I wrapped where it goes through this frame with double canvas. If a fellow wanted to, and if these ever blow or we ever have problems with them, I think I will take the time. The OEM kit was hard lines that came up, but I didn't really want to mess with that, and I've never really messed with hard lines. I've never made my own hard lines. So I don't know how to do that. But I think if I ever have issues with this, if this ever ruptures or blows, one, we'll, we'll know pretty quick, won't we? And two, I think then I'll take the time to uh, maybe put some hard lines in there. But I, I really like it. I'm walking away from it feeling good. Let me get everything buttoned back up. I tightened all these down already, so they should be good. Let's get everything buttoned back up. And then I want to, uh, I still want to hook it up to this jobby here and just see what this does. See if there's anything we could make out of this. Maybe we'll get inspired if it's on the back of the tractor. So this is set up for a different category pin style, I won't go in there. I've got her kind of secured with this pin. I'm tempted, I am very tempted to uh, try to hook it up and just maybe run it up a little bit. I mean, it's, it's somewhat secure. So this thing is powered one way, it just goes in the bottom and it lifts the cylinder and then the gravity from the forklift mast will bring it back down, it's not attached to the mast anymore. I just want to see if the cylinder actually went out and it did, but um, I don't have anything heavy to push the fluid back out to the tractor, so I'm not going to get too crazy with it because that's a lot of fluid, probably more than, I don't know, I kind of got to do the math, that's quite a bit of fluid in there. Does anybody know? Can you take that out and plumb that to be powered both ways? I'm not 100% sure. If you look at the bottom, it actually plumbs into the cylinder itself on the rod itself, and it's two different size, uh, two different size rods. They're pushing against each other, like pushing apart. I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't know. I'm open for suggestions on what to do with this thing, because uh, I hate to let it go to waste, but I honestly don't know what to do with it. Should be able to fall without hurting anything here. Beautiful. I'm just going to leave that on there for now. I need to order another set of these anyway. And everything that is national pipe thread. I didn't use any pipe sealant because I didn't want to take a chance of putting too much on and end up in the system somewhere. But everything that's national pipe thread uh, is pretty much has a little seep to it. Everything that's JIC or uh, O-ring boss fittings is dry and looks good. But uh, all my MPT threads here and here that one there they're leaking so i gotta disassemble all that dry them off clean them off with some brake cleaner and uh, put some thread sealant on those anyway i'm not too worried about that though if we just got a few leaks to clean up that's not too big of a deal the bracket turned out fine uh, i do think i'm gonna get a washer for this but to do that i've got to get a little bit longer bolt i gotta make sure i still got plenty of thread back here in this block this does hold on the top link so it's got to be strong that's not something we can half butter way through we got to do that one right so I've got to get that bolt the right length the right thread pitch it's a metric and, and I grabbed the wrong one from the tractor store the other day but a little bit longer so I can put a proper washer on there to hold that plate but it's I mean she's secure she's on there good the routing under the seat looks fantastic I absolutely love that I really like the way it turned out I'm happy at this placement I can run back to an implement very easily I can run up to a grapple very easily and uh, you saw when I was sitting on the seat, these are super comfortable as far as the operator station. As far as the operator station goes, these are absolutely fantastic. They feel really, really good. And hopefully that made sense why I went for just good old fashioned mechanical hydraulics over electronic. That whole tractor is mechanical. Um, there's not any electronics other than the light switch, 
the starter solenoid, and the seat safety. That's the only electronics on that tractor, and I like it that way, and I'm going to keep it that way. But I will say, that Summit kit, uh, that kit that Tractor Time with Tim uses as well, they look like awesome kits. They look like they work really well, and if you don't want to go through all the trouble of customizing your fender or um, routing all the hoses, you know, it's a lot easier to route wires than it is to route hoses. They'd do you good. I think it'd do you good, but I really like the way this turned out. I'm happy with it, and this opens a ton of doors for fabrication projects for us a grapple obviously a more extensive road drag with some hydraulic adjustments a hydraulic top link maybe i don't know there's all kinds of things we can do i'm very excited about it i love the way it turned out i don't think i'd change anything other than you know i would have got everything right the first time instead of fumbling my way through but that's it that's all i've got i've got to get some parts ordered i've got a seal leaking on the front axle on that 755 i don't know if you guys know that so i gotta get some parts coming for that and I've got to get the 1500, the GMC, all put back together as well. So we got to get those things buttoned up. And then hopefully the YouTube yacht. We got a lot of little odds and ends of things I want to get finished before we get to the YouTube yacht. But when we get back to it, we have a ton of material coming. A lot of tons of material coming. And we will be nonstop on the YouTube yacht for like two months straight whenever we get back on that kick. It's going to be a lot of work. The floor, the finish on the outside of the ICF, that permacrete. Um, we're going to start doing some dirt work around the outside. We'll be able to go ahead and start framing up the first or the second and third floors. We got a lot of stuff coming and a lot of work coming up on that. I just kind of want to get this stuff buttoned up and wrapped up before we get tied into it. I don't really want to pull off of it for all these little odds and ends. I think that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. I honestly don't care if it does or not because that's what I'm doing. And um, 